today our, our world isn't defined by BC necessarily, nor do we look at it through the lens of AD, whereas years ago uh, you had a BC era, which now they will call a common era, and then you also had AD or Anno Domini and all of that. Uh, today most people have not even uh, been alive to witness or see World War I or World War II. And then, if you're millennial, uh, uh, we have not even lived to see the Vietnam War. But our world today is more commonly defined as pre-9-11 and post-9-11. As pre-9-11 and post-9-11. Post-9-11, September 11, 2001. Ever since then, there has been a terrorism dynamic that has created disillusionment in our nation. In the 1960s, a man in his 50s who wrestled with anxiety would be considered rare. In the 1960s, a man who wrestled with anxiety in his 50s would be considered rare. For him to be medicated would even be very, even more rare or uncommon. Today, what once would have been given to a 50-year-old in the 60s for anxiety is now given to 13 and 14 year olds in schools. Anxiety and depression has been so rampant in the last 14 years since 9-11, it has happened in ways that are unprecedented. There seems to be a hopelessness in the environment concerning our times. Every single day, you are bombarded with bad news. And the church in the West, particularly in America, is what some people would say on life support. I even, I even went online the other day and saw an article where someone boldly stated that Christianity in America will not exist in 2067. We, of course, know that's not true because the gospel is eternal. But it is very interesting to see how marginalized Christianity is becoming in our culture and our day. Uh, I find it even more fascinating that 50 years ago, the strength of the African American or black community was the church. And today, African Americans don't do church. As a matter of fact, 70% of African Americans in America don't go to church. You can look online on your timeline and see on Sundays, everybody's tweeting about the, or, or talking about the latest thing that they've seen, heard, or experienced. But very rarely do you see the timelines that strong concerning things pertaining to faith. There is a rise of restlessness and unease when it comes to the gospel. But I've got good news for you this morning. Amen. Since 9-11, the church has not responded well. And prior to, uh, the church was filled primarily on television and everywhere with prosperity and wealth sermons. And then uh, after 9-11, seven years later, we entered into the financial crisis. And then after which, that same year, we also elected our first black president. And then seven years later, here we are today, Ferguson. Freddie Gray, Charleston, a marriage legalized in all 50 states, and the threat of ISIS. It is incredible to me how in less than 14 years our entire framework has been rearranged. But today, most of what we are hearing preached is good advice, but not good news. But the gospel is still news you can use. This requires us to go back to the greatest story ever told, which today has become the greatest story never told. What is the good news that Jesus himself announced and told his followers to announce as well? We assume today that we understand the gospel because it seems so familiar. We assume today that we understand the gospel because we've been entrenched in church. 
So we skip over the significance of why Christianity comes to us in the form of an announcement of the best possible news. Remember growing up, there was old mother, uh, my girl, mother by the name of Mother Patterson, and she would get up, and every time she would testify, she would sing a song and say, I've got good news to tell you, I've got good news. I've got good news to tell you, I've got good news. And I used to sit there as a little boy, and I, I used to get annoyed sometimes. Every time she get up, she sing the same song. But now, as I get older, I no longer hear the good news. Amen. The word gospel, let's, let's really develop this. I want you to hear me, because I'm standing this morning on the auction. The word gospel in our times now carries different meanings. We talk of gospel truth when we want to stress how something reliable is. Uh, in some churches, preaching the gospel means to explain how to become a Christian, or it is more so a formula or a prayer of how to get to heaven. Okay, we, 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 we sometimes hear when some people today think of gospel, they think of a type of music on their Spotify account. Even though gospel music does give excitement, what does Jesus mean by it? What does Jesus mean by it? I submit to you this morning, number one, that we are in a place in which we are hearing good advice, but wrong news. Good advice, but wrong news. And I want you to prepare to get this down. That's what things released to you. When Jesus and the early Christians spoke of good news, they meant more than this. They really saw it as news, and they believed that this news was so good, it was worth announcing as widely as possible. The news is about something that has happened, and as a result, everything will now be different. Many of our culture today, we have shifted. And a recent article by uh, Bishop Joe Terry talks about how we went uh, in the last 30 years from theological preaching or uh, crisis of preaching to more therapeutic preaching, psychological preaching. And you see that uh, in every dynamic. Uh, good advice says here's how to live. Here's how to pray. Here are techniques for you becoming a better person, to live a better life. Take this advice, say this prayer, and you're good to go. And while there's nothing wrong with advice, there's nothing wrong with advice. That's not necessarily the whole context of good news. When Paul says in this passage, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, I'm not ashamed of the good news, let's, let's really explore how this works. The purpose of advice is to make you do something and get a desired result. But news is an announcement. News is an announcement that something significant has happened. And as a result, nothing will ever be the same again. Somebody shout good news. Good news. So how do we explain the gospel? How do we explain the G-O-S-P-E-L? Let's really dissect this and take this apart uh, for a few moments and I'll be through. Number one, G. God, good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Uh, N.T. Wright said that part of the genius of Christianity is that each generation has to think it through afresh. Part of the genius of genuine Christianity is that each generation has to think it through afresh. Stay with me. Now, good news. Let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse number 10. Let's give me about 15 more minutes and I'll be finished. Luke chapter 2, verse number 10. Just hear me. Just hear me. I'm going to work us through this. Okay. Then the answer said unto him, Do not be afraid, for behold. Someone say, Behold. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Behold. That word behold, as I've shared before, it is also in indicative of us to focus in, to gaze upon. So it says, Behold, uh, 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 do not be afraid, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy. I bring good news to you. 
salvation, I bring good news. So when we look at the gospel, uh, uh, G stands for good news. Now here's how good news works. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. Good news means, first of all, that something has happened. Something has happened. Something has happened. Uh, the next couple of weeks, I'm going to walk you through uh, the different types of good news and why he particularly uses good news uh, in, in Romans and why the Gospels use it because their understanding of it and what we hear and see today is totally off. And so we have to really get in alignment uh, with what Scripture and then also what the church fathers have to say on that. Something that happened. Something that will happen. And now, a radical change in how things are. So there's an announcement. Something has happened. My life has been changed. Some of you have come and you've heard a word, you've heard a message here, and the Lord has touched you, and as a result, things in you change. I have the same clothes on, I have the same shoes, the same tie, the same everything, but something in you changed. And as a result, things are no longer the same. The gospel is not a new subject, nor does it hurt with age. Men in every generation have heard it, yet it is new as tomorrow. So what is good news? The good news of the gospel is that Jesus came to be the Savior of the world. To be the Savior of the world. And despite popular opinion or popular belief, he is still the supreme sovereign God of the universe. Contrary to what we vote and act or decide we want to do uh, in and of ourselves. So the word gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, good news. But then let's look at the O. The O stands for opportunity. Everybody say opportunity. 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 Mark chapter 13, verse number 10. Mark chapter 13, verse number 10. Mark chapter 13, verse number 10. Stay with me. Mark chapter 13, verse number 10. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. Opportunity. In this world of greed, opportunities are not equal for all. Just look around you. Opportunities are not equal for all. I read an article the other day that said that the median income of 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 a of of, of um, one household is over hundred thousand dollars. The median income of of um, another community uh, in our nation was not even ten percent of that. You know, and so so opportunities are not equal for all. But the gospel means opportunity for everyone. Christ is the answer for the sin problem. At the root of all the stuff we're seeing, all the murders, all the killing, all the decisions, everything that's going on, sin is at the root of it. But the gospel is opportunity for all. So you can be that way, or you can act that way, or you can do that thing, but you can't stay that way. <laughs> and see, we have a whole lot today of feel good Therapeutic, good advice. But when it comes to the gospel, it requires a sacrifice. And sacrifice doesn't sound. <laughs> I'm really excited because the times are going to demand for us corporately to really begin to see who's who. Opportunity. Christ is the answer for the sin problem. S, let's move. S, S, salvation. 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 Glory to God. Romans 1.16 again, and I want us to piece through this. Is this helping somebody? Amen. Romans 1.16. Romans 1.16. I want to really break this down and get this to you. Trust me, you know I, I can swing it either way, but I, 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 want, I want you to understand this, okay? Romans 1.16. For I am ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it's the power of God to salvation. It's the, it is the power. 
It is the power. It is the power, Joy. It's not, it's not us that's the power. It is the power. It is the same gospel that touched you right where you were. Some people know the day and the hour and the time that they checked in. I don't remember the day nor the time, but all I know is that somewhere along the line, he touched me. Amen. And it is the power of God unto salvation. When we really get back to praying and fasting for real, we'll begin to see the power of God show up. And when the power of God show up, cancer got to get out of body. When the power of God show up, sugar got to step back. When the power of God show up, high blood pressure got to go down. When the power of God begins to show up for real, we'll begin to see a revival break out across this nation. Somebody shout power. Power. Glory to God. Salvation. Sin is the real problem. Wars, strife, ISIS, Charleston are all products of sin. The gospel means salvation from sin. Christ came to destroy Satan's works and set men free from bondage. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed all right let me take a start uh this week these last two weeks i've been uh, uh, uh working on temple ministry my body and so i've been going uh, uh to planet fitness and, and mcgregor and been stretching me and we're gonna put a video up when i was doing the lifts and all this stuff and 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 and, and lord knows it, it's hard because you know you, you get in the rut and you don't you know you don't want to do it they get up come on we go and they're dragging me to get there and and i went and i had a black card Glory to God. I had a black card. I don't know why I'm still so preachy now. I had a black card. And I went with my black card, Mother Louie, and I walked in, and I just went to the regular weights and stuff, Sister Allen, and I would go, and I was getting ready to walk out. My brother stopped me and said, no, you're a black card member. You're entitled to unlimited massage chair. I said, I am? He said, yeah, you also are entitled to the hydro massage. I said, I am? He said, let me take you downstairs. When I went downstairs, there was all of these other opportunities that I never knew I had with the card that I had. Oftentimes, uh, we come to Jesus and just think he saved us so that when we die, we can go to heaven. But there's some other things that you get with your black card. There's some other things that you get while you're right where you are, that he wants to serve you and give you so that you are able to bless those around you. But you're underutilizing your membership. Yeah. Look at somebody and tell them it's still news. It still news. You can use. Yeah. Glory to God. I'm almost there. So he says salvation. Uh, uh, the gospel means salvation from sin. Christ came to destroy the works of the devil and to set men free from bondage. All right. Now let's go to Romans chapter 10 verse 15. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Come now. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And let's look at this here uh, real quick. Real quick. So G is good news. O is what? Opportunity. S is what? Salvation. Now let's look at P. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Glory to God. And how shall they preach? Unless they are sick. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. How shall they hear? How shall they preach unless they are sent? For it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. So not only do I have good news, not only do I have opportunity, not only do I have salvation, but he also gives me peace. Oh, I want somebody to hear me this morning. God has a way of sending you rest in the midst of the unrest. God has a way of giving you peace in spite of the pain. God has a way of being able to touch you right where you need to be despite how you feel. That's why our faith is not established by our feelings. Our faith has been established by our trust in God. So whether or not things turn out the way we plan, God is still able. Whether or not things happen the way we want them to, God is still able. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. And 
his righteousness. Despite our scientific, I'm closing, despite our scientific, educational, and cultural achievements, there is still a need for peace on the earth. The gospel brings needed, lasting peace. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. I want you to hear this. Just get it down. I'll read it to you. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. Gotta move. Gotta move. Gotta move. Gotta move. Gotta move. Revelation chapter 14 and verse number 6. Hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. yes. Glory to God. And then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth. You see, I don't wait for, I don't preach for response. Amen. They'll tell you, I don't preach for response. Amen. Because when I stand up before you, I already shouted when I was studying it. Amen. You have to understand something. D. Martin Lloyd-Jones said that preaching is logic on fire. He said, every now and then you ought to set yourself on fire and while you're preaching, the people ought to watch you burn. There's already a fire on the inside of me. Notice what he said. He said that I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. So the gospel is good news, opportunity, salvation, peace, but it is also everlasting. Houses don't last. Land doesn't last. Yeah. Silver doesn't last. Beauty doesn't last. You can be young and hot today and be old and cold tomorrow. Y'all come over here today. But the gospel is everlasting. Yeah. Look at someone and tell them it's everlasting. It's everlasting. It's everlasting. Yesterday we celebrated as a nation the 4th of July 1776 when uh, we enacted the Declaration of independence. But I want you to know that 2,000 years ago my freedom was already granted. When Jesus died on the cross he literally took the sting of death and as a result I'm free every single day of the week. And while I celebrate and ate my hot dogs and ate my burgers on yesterday, I want you to know that I didn't eat them just because I was celebrating the 4th of July. But I ate it because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. So I look at your neighbor and say, I'm already free. I'm already free. I'm already free. I'm already they free. just got the realization of an eternal promise in heaven. But the gospel is everlasting. Somebody shout everlasting. Amen. Right now, just somebody give God a praise. Amen. So it is good news. It is opportunity. There is salvation. There is peace. It is also everlasting. Then now let's look at the air. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever and whatsoever they might be in that they believe they shall not perish but they shall have everlasting life. So we move from just having good news and we move to opportunity and we move to salvation and we move to peace. But after we move from peace, we move to everlasting love. I wonder if there's somebody here this morning that can just thank God that he loved you in spite of where you were, in spite of what you did. God doesn't have a big mouth. He loved you beyond yourself. Somebody give God praise for his love. So the gospel as I close is news you can use. It is good news. It is opportunity. It is salvation. It is peace. It is everlasting. It is love. 